It's Saturday, the 28th of April, 2018, and this is your EV News Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. A very warm welcome from London in the UK, and here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV article online, so you don't have to. Well, for your weekend edition, I thought we'd take a little look at the Bloomberg Tesla Tracker. That's where they combine a number of data points, things like the amount of VINs which have been registered, but also combined with uh, some actual evidence of people posting online about their Model 3 deliveries. They've actually got them in their hands. And we can take a look at how that chart has been going up. And I saw it today and thought it was kind of interesting. So we should have a look at the latest numbers. Now, this is a tool by Tom Randall and Dean Halford. And they say, we built our own model to estimate the weekly output of the car that could make or break Elon Musk's master plan. So what's the latest numbers? Well, their best estimate is that Tesla's made 21,159 Model 3s so far, and their current weekly estimation is 2,673 per week. But let's look at how that has increased. Week beginning, if you go back to March, and so what are we going back here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's uh, seven weeks. And we know there was a shutdown in the factory. It, they were estimating 603 Model 3s per week. Now, that had gone down, admittedly. Take the next week, and the next week is kind of around the 18th of March. And that went up to almost 1,962. Moving on to the next week, so you're looking at about the 25th of March. Again, added 500, 1,462 Model 3s. Add another week to that around the 1st of April, that Sunday 1st of April week, uh, about 1,700. So again, a little step up and then a really big step up uh, as you go to the next week, the 8th of April, 2,377. They're making big jumps all the time around sometimes 500, sometimes 300, 400. The current estimate, by the way, is that 2,673 Model 3s are being made per week. Of course, if you remember the email from Elon, which was apparently leaked, maybe it was meant to be out in the public domain, who knows? The burst rate, 6,000, is meant to be made by the end of June, uh, with the idea that 5,000 could be comfortably made every single week of the Tesla Model 3. So that's our little look, a little recap, because I don't really mentioned it in the last week because of all the news coming from China. Another thing thing I like to do occasionally is take a look at the mainstream media and see what they're saying about electric vehicles, because like it or not, uh, those big newspapers and websites can largely guide public opinion until people try for themselves. And I always say when you first try an EV, uh, the two things you notice, the speed and the silence, uh, that's what gets you hooked. And the other little things like saving money and all that, that's kind of the, that's the head, that's the logical, that's the stuff that you know, but the stuff in the heart, the, the, the visceral element of driving an EV, how quick they are off the line, and how you can just have a normal conversation with people at a normal volume, even if you want to whisper. People can hear you. And so, let's have a look at what Huffington Post are talking about today in a brand new article about charging. And they've picked up on a press release from a couple of days ago. We talked about it on the podcast. You'll know all about ABB, the Swiss company involved in Formula E. And back when we first talked about the uh, the Electrify America news, maybe it was even a week ago now on the podcast, the fact that the terror chargers are going to be used. These high-power chargers are going to be used in North America as part of the Electrify America. 2,000 chargers, 500 locations, uh, and these are the 350 kilowatt chargers. Now, in this Huffington Post article, what they don't mention is 350 kilowatts, which is good, because that's kind of nerdy, geeky. You and I like getting off on how fast is the charge speed. But remember, these are people who would buy an ice car tomorrow, and they don't go into that kind of level of detail. All they say is the new electric car chargers can add 200 kilometres of range in just eight minutes, overcoming one of the biggest headaches that faces most electric car owners. Uh, And okay, so that bit of the article might not be true. You might not have a massive headache about charging your car overnight or at work, which is where 96% of charging instances actually occur. However, We'll let them get away with that. Uh, They then make some very reasonable points about how most EVs can fill up between 15 and 45 minutes. Kind of a bit optimistic, actually, isn't it? And and how, if you own a Tesla, you can fill it up in 20 minutes. Uh, Kind of optimistic again there, but we're not going to correct them. So they're painting a really rosy picture about EVs in very everyday language. And finally, from Huffington Post, I quote, Of course, with anything that sounds too good to be true, there's a catch, but it's not as severe as you might expect. Uh, And they go on to say how the chargers for 350 kilowatts, don't mention the number, uh, the fast chargers are ready, but the cars are going to be here very soon from BMW, Audi, 
and Volkswagen. Again, they don't go into specific names of cars and all those kind of things, but it's a really complimentary article written in very everyday language, overcoming one of those uh, pinch points of people saying, oh, it takes you know four hours to charge a car, and Huffington Post saying, hey, it's going to take like eight minutes, same as it takes to pull up to a gas station, go in, pay, and come back again. Well, moving on, and the World Economic Forum website a few weeks ago published uh, the top three things about electric cars, and I only just found the article, so I thought I'd have a little squiz over it because it's still good stuff to talk about, right? Uh, Firstly, they talk about how electrification of transport is cleaner than burning combustion fuels. In your car, how most of it goes away is heat. And it says that even with powering your EV by coal and gas, uh, then they're already 60% cleaner. Secondly, they say that as battery prices fall, EVs are soon going to be much cheaper than internal combustion vehicles. Over the next five years, that's going to decrease until the crossover point. And thirdly, they say that if charging times and locations are carefully planned, EVs actually have a benefit, not only because of smart charging, but because you get in your car every morning that they're full and that old EV batteries can store a surplus of electricity, kind of second life. That kind of thing. Fascinating article by the World Economic Forum. As always, we'll put a link on the show notes uh, so you can read more. Really big article. That's just kind of the top line headlines. Well, from Adrian at Inside EVs, he says that the BMW i1 is reportedly in the works. And that would make sense because, of course, BMW, owner of Mini, are going to have the new Mini, electric Mini, on sale next year. Or is it in production in 2019? I think it's on sale by the end of next year. And with any of these major car manufacturers, they need to use the platform for more cars and to just make those assets work just a little bit harder. Uh, This is intelligence coming from Motor.es. And it says that the i1 is going to use the same platform as the Mini Cooper Electric. Not sure where the Mini Cooper Electric is going to be on sale, first of all. It's being made here in the UK in one of the locations. We're looking forward to seeing it uh, in more motor shows hopefully as soon as possible because we really want to see it. It's a great little, the Mini certainly, is a great form factor of a car, not too big, not too small, a great platform and a new BMW i1 would make sense. And we know from something we talked about on the podcast weeks ago now, the BMW have registered all those things like iX1, iX2, iX3, iX4, etc. for the different markets as trademarks all around the world. Well, let's go to the southwest of Great Britain, to some ancient mines, the southwestern tip of the UK. Uh, Seaside towns, the kind of places that uh, holidaymakers might go to, very popular. A place called Cornwall, it's a county, and it's got some of the largest tin deposits in the country. Those mines, obviously centuries old now, and have been abandoned for 20 or 30 years, when a collapse in prices for tin made them just unviable. Now there's an increased demand for tin and other metals that can be used in electric vehicles. So it's an example of how something which was previously closed down and seen as uneconomic could have a second life. Now, Pauline Latham, who heads a parliamentary mining group here in the UK, says this, and I quote, we need to ensure the secure supply of technology metals and critical minerals. Uh, This is necessary with China owning the majority of the market and the potential of global trade and a war between China and America. End quote. So lots of those places that might have deposits which are useful all of a sudden, uh, finding a little bit of um, economic benefit and some assets they didn't realise they had. A bit of a mini metals rush. It's being described by Inside EVs. And then, of course, there's manufacturers like BMW earlier this week with the iX3 concept uh, boasted about how they are developing their own motors for their EVs without using any rare earth metals. Well, an article from Evanex.com. You know Evanex, they make aftermarket parts, which are all very lovely and shiny and delicious for your Teslas. And they have four charts, which they've pulled together. Now, they sourced this from Global X, and they recently made the case for EVs via Seeking Alpha, uh, says Evanex. Uh, for electric vehicles are rapidly expanding, they say, and appear poised to trigger the transportation industry's largest shakeup in over a century. So the first graph they come to is EVs versus ICE cars on fuel cost. And electric vehicles are half the price. On annual maintenance and electric vehicles 
a far less. On CO2 emissions, grams CO2 per mile, yeah, it's not even a close competition. The next graph that Evan X point out is the battery cost, the dollar cost per kilowatt hour. And this was fascinating, actually. There was a recent uh, news edition of The Brilliant Fully Charged uh, with Robert Llewellyn and Johnny Smith doing it in a, uh, an underground bunker. <laughs> it was the basement, really, of an electric bike shop here in London. But the bike shop's also called Fully Charged, but they're two very separate things. And they talked briefly about how much battery costs have come down. You go back to 2010 and the battery costs, the dollars per kilowatt hour, was $1,000 per kilowatt hour. And at the moment, uh, the, the graph goes up to 2016. It's gone down to 200. Now, there's been a few in the last two years. I've seen articles, um, speculation, I must admit, but speculation saying that that is now down to the mid-hundreds and that some manufacturers, due to scale, are getting $150 per kilowatt hour. Elon has, in the past, publicly talked about $100 per kilowatt hour being the golden number and the point at which it becomes a no-brainer because the rest of the EV, the inverter, the motor, the control electronics, they're all relatively cheap. So all you're making is a skateboard underneath and a shell to go on top. And if you haven't got to bother with thousands of bits and a supply chain for an internal combustion engine, when that battery price goes down to $100, it's just a no-brainer. Even if you want an ice car, a few people will be making them because they can't make any money off of them. And the EVs are just going to be so much cheaper. The third graph is electric vehicle ranges. In 2011, the median range was 73. In 2017, the median range is 114. And that gap isn't so huge, uh, but the maximum range of an EV back in 2011 was 94 miles. In 2017, it was 335 miles. A huge difference, a massive increase in the very top end of the market, how far cars can go now on those 100 kilowatt hour batteries in Model S's and Model X's. It's the interesting, the median number, which has gone from 73 to 114. And you need to remember, although that number hasn't increased massively, it's the use case of EVs at the moment, which is driving that most people are doing a commute and most people buy a Nissan Leaf over 300,000 of them sold in the world. So when people say, why don't you have a bigger battery in the Nissan Leaf? It's simple market forces and economics. So that median figure of 114 miles for the vehicle range makes total sense because that's the use case of EVs at the moment. And that will only increase, not hugely, I mean, in the next five years, if we saw the median EV range of 180, I'd be really surprised because there's going to be so many smaller cars dragging it down and very fewer bigger cars pulling it up, although things like the 60 kilowatt hour pack in the Hyundai Kona and the 70 kilowatt hour pack in the BMW iX3, definitely going to increase that range. But the median range sticking at 114 at the moment. And finally, it's the global EV and plug-in sales and the market share. Global market share has gone from 0.5% uh, in 2014 to 1.7% in 2017. And again, that doesn't tell the whole story because you need to look at those markets which are ahead of the curve. Markets like Norway, where it's now over half of all new cars sold are electric cars. And so let's talk about uh, how many people are buying electric cars. And the March numbers have been compiled uh, for electric car sales here in Europe. And March turned out to be the best month ever for plug-in car sales, says Market Inside EVs. 40,936 plug-ins were sold last month in Europe. Market share here, 2.2%. And people will still say that's low, but it's increasing rapidly. And the big reason? Well, that Nissan Leaf. They're making it in three locations around the world, and they're making it in good numbers, and they're getting it in people's hands as well. There's still a waiting list for it, by the way, uh, but that Nissan Leaf is the full f first full month of sales at a record 6,053 sales. Norway, of course, is already so far ahead, 53, 55% market share of plug-in sales now. Uh, the Renault Zoe is really big here in Europe. Uh, if you're listening to us around the world in Asia or America, I know we have like half the podcast audience are in the USA. Uh, so here, Renault Zoe, tiny little city car, wouldn't suit your roads, uh, but is a great little car, 40 kilowatt hour battery in the ZE40. Uh, the BMW i3 does very well. The Tesla Model S, uh, the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, not many miles on pure EV for that, but doing really well. And even the Passat and the Golf GTE uh, do some pretty good numbers as well. Year-to-date sales on things like the VW e-Golf, uh, just over 5,000. That's going to be interesting to watch because with the ID around the corner, and is it going to be called the Neo, as we told you yesterday? That e-Golf has got a bit of a shelf life. 
And I wonder how many people are going to go and buy one, knowing that maybe in the next year or 18 months, there ain't going to be no more e-golfs for sale. Or maybe I'll be proven wrong. I hope so. It's a lovely, the, the upgrade they made last year to the e-Golf, bigger battery, bigger motor. It's really lovely. Well, thank you so much for listening today. Uh, I'd love to spread the word about electric cars. If you can, share this with somebody who might be interested. You can listen to every previous episode of the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, and the blog, evnewsdaily.com. Remember to subscribe. That means you haven't got to think about downloading it every single day. And you get it first and free and automatically. And what's not to love about that. If you have two minutes to rate and review, that would be lovely. On an Amazon Echo, you can get the Alexa skill, so you can say, Alexa, play my flash briefing, and it'll play you this. Search EV News Daily. And on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, come and say hi. Again, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend, and I'll catch you tomorrow.